the problem that I wanted to deal with um, has the following results. One person dies from this problem every 24 seconds. It actually kills more people than malaria. It results in the transmission of 23 million cases of hepatitis every year. And let alone the, uh, the resulting ill health that comes from that, you can imagine the drop in productivity and the treatment costs that come associated. It is actually responsible for 300,000 cases of HIV being transmitted every year. And, ladies and gentlemen, it is a humble injection. This process that takes place billions of times every single year and delivered by healthcare workers is actually the problem that I was trying to solve. So now I've told you what it is, I can tell you that 62% of all injections given in India every year are unsafe. 20 million injections are given every year in Africa which contain the blood from the previous patient who was HIV positive. And 70% of all people in the developing world report a fever after receiving an injection and they think this is normal. So this happens for two reasons. One is reuse. And this is a scene that I see daily when I'm traveling around the developing world. An old glass syringe which should have gone out in the 1970s being reused many times and a needles floating in lukewarm water where the patient is simply asked to take their pick. There's also recycling and here you can see out the back of a hospital a, a special bath made where they wash the syringes. This is a daily occurrence. You can see how many there are being washed and they separate them out, wash them. Of course they don't get them all but the water they're washing these syringes in uh, uh, is definitely infected and they're taken back upstairs and used again. In 1984 I read a newspaper article. Um, it was something I always wanted to do, be involved in a large intervention uh, like this and when I read this newspaper article that predicted the reuse of syringes that was what I wanted to do and I jumped in. So two and a half years of research led me to this solution. And the solution is that I had to design a syringe which was made on existing equipment, could be made for exactly the same price as a normal syringe and used in the same way. And very quickly I will uh, just show you how it works. So here's my syringe. Um, it is used in exactly the same way. Um, all the different functions are observed. You uh, inject and if you try and reuse it and refill it, it locks inside the barrel and it can't be used again. Thank you. In, in India I ran a campaign where we were able to um, target this 62% number and in a five day period I was able to run a massive campaign uh, where over 500 million views of our healthcare message which we put together um, resulted in 240 press articles and then I was able to go to the minister who had refused to see me for five years and mandate, uh, get a mandate put in place that these syringes were used all across the country of India in the public health system. So the results so far, just to kind of bring this to a close, since 2001, which was when I sold my first syringe, and here's a picture. So I started in 1984. Uh, in 2001, 17 years later, I was able to uh, be successful, if you like, and sell the first syringe. Um, and this was in Cambodia, where I saw the first one being used. Uh, since then, we've been able to sell 2 billion. We have a licensing model, 14 manufacturers who make them. Um, and we've been credited with saving 10 million fatal infections from taking place uh, because of that. Thank you. And for 200 auto-disabled syringes, the name of this product, the hospital administrator has worked out that he's saving $200 in downstream costs. This is $1 saves $200. More ADs, more AD syringes mean less syringes. So what's going to happen in the future? Um, well, I think that my work for the next few years is going to concentrate on these three areas. We've got to have global legislation. I'm hoping that I can manipulate enough countries to support me for a UN resolution. 
we've got to have public information campaigns because it's a partnership in the developing world between the patient and the doctor because most of the time they're not even trained, they're just quacks, so we have to close that loop. And finally, I think that we have to be brave and we have to start looking at open sourcing these, these types of innovations. And I'm very willing to give my product away if I know that all manufacturers in the world would be willing to make it on a royalty-free basis. And that's the final word that I would like to leave you with. Thank you.